Hello. Uh, our day at MNFMeet it is slowly uh, getting to an end, but we still have uh, something in front of us, and that's one of the favorite parts of every MDEF camp and even we did in past. And it's lightning talks. Uh, during lightning talks, we'll have uh, today just two quick short presentations, and it will be a little special this year because for the presentations, we asked and convinced uh, two members of our organizers team of MDEF Camp. They are both developers. Uh, they are both former mobile developers, now doing many other things as well. And uh, they will share you some interesting story about what they do when they are not programming. Uh, the first one to come on stage, on the virtual stage, is uh, David Vavra. And David will talk about his year with Tesla Model 3, about his ups and downs. He will have limited time for the talk. That's why it's a lightning talk. And I have limited time for my interaction. So that's it for me. Uh, David, if you are here, if you are connected, the I'm, I see you there. Hello. <laughs> and the Hello. stage is. <laughs> Can you hear me fine? So uh, hello, hello everybody, and uh, I would like to tell you a story about uh, my car, uh, Tesla Model 3. Uh, I have it uh, for a year now, and uh, I have experienced a lot. So uh, this is me uh, a year ago, very first day, uh, when I uh, picked the car in uh, here in Visochani in Prague. Uh, it's really my dream car. I have been saving for it uh, many years and it's also actually my first car. So I was really happy. But uh, my happiness was spoiled a bit uh, because uh, I, I found out that there is a scratch uh, on the brand new car. So uh, the Tesla guys really apologized and they told me I could either wait a few weeks and uh, then uh, take the car or uh, just uh, take it now and they will fix it later. I was anxious to drive it, so I just said fix it later and they fixed it in uh, three weeks. They re replaced this uh, um, part of the car with no issues. So uh, the question when I'm talking about electric cars or Tesla I'm getting all the, all the time is like, what's the range? Uh, where do you charge it? How much does it cost? And it's really interesting that in the whole year I haven't paid anything for, for charging actually. Uh, I was driving completely free the whole year. Imagine if you don't have to pay for gas uh, whole year. So it's really liberating. So uh, most people charge uh, their electric cars at home where they pay for electricity. I don't have this option, but uh, I charge my car mostly at work. It was quite easy to negotiate with my employer and uh, the company actually pays for uh, the electricity. So uh, it's free for me. Plus uh, for like longer trips, we did even some Euro trips, uh, so I have some referral credits uh, in Tesla superchargers. If you, if uh, people buy car through your link, you get uh, free kilometers. I have uh, still about like six thousand kilometers left. Plus, we found out that uh, even in Czech Republic, many people are offering charging for free. It's mostly supermarkets like Kaufland, Vela. Uh, uh, and uh, stuff like that. And we actually created a, a map for free supercharging. So this is what uh, what you, you are looking at. So all these places are uh, free charging. Um, and you can you can find this if you search in Czech Nabim Zadarmo. So uh, you can download our app or website where you can check, check this uh, free charging. But uh, what you should be aware of is that the uh, range of electric cars slowly uh, goes down. Uh, it's not nothing dramatic, uh, but you should be aware of it. Like in the beginning, uh, as you can see on this graph, uh, it was about uh, 500 kilometers and now it's about uh, 465. 
uh, the the battery degra degrades a bit. It's actually slowing down. So the next year it it will not be the uh, like twenty five kilometers. It will be less. But you should be aware of it, and you should also take care about your battery. That means. Uh, don't often charge it 200% or uh, deplete it to 0%. It's not good for the battery. If you are between like 80% to 20%, the battery health is good. You can see uh, we drove over uh, or about uh, 30,000 kilometers in this year. So something about the money, like uh, everybody says uh, Tesla cars are really expensive and they are. But if you compare the uh, prices to uh, like cars uh, for like uh, from medium category, not the cheapest or the most expensive. And if you add a lot of things which are standard in Tesla, uh, like uh, air conditioning or uh, uh, like uh, assisted, assisted driving features, the price is pretty similar. Plus you can even, uh, the car can even earn you money. So I'm using the car mostly on weekends because I live in Prague. I don't need it uh, during the weekday. So I am renting the car on platform Hopigo and this is the my revenue over the year, which is nice. But there is a downside. I didn't expect that the insurance uh, is pretty high uh, for Tesla cars. Uh, I think it will go down in the future because uh, the statistics of uh, like safety of the cars and also low maintenance should really reflect in the insurance. But uh, today's check uh, insurance companies just uh, price it as uh, like luxury car. So this is the reality now. This is the price for the year for me. Like insurance, uh, it's, it's also my first car, so it's a bit higher. I think. Uh, another point I want to talk is software. So Tesla cars, it's really, it is the most unique in Tesla cars uh, compared to all the other cars uh, on the market is that it's more software than hardware and it actually updates. So the car is changing, it's getting new features. These are all features uh, added uh, in this year. Some of it is just on the display, like the new games, but there are also like hardware related uh, changes so it affects how you drive so for example automated stopping at traffic lights were added or uh, charge port heating uh, so it doesn't freeze uh, in the winter and stuff like that they can just update via software updates which is really awesome and i really enjoy it as a software developer but there is also a downside so because it's a it's a software, so you can expect some software issues and uh, people don't usually associate uh, software issues with cars. So uh, I had this one, one story uh, when uh, I was playing with this Easter eggs, I was showing it to a friend. There is this page of Easter eggs, the car, car can fart and <laughs> stuff like that. And the screen was behaving a little strangely, but we say, uh, okay, and then, uh, I started driving and the blinkers didn't work for some reason because it's all software. So we had to stop, we had to reboot the car <laughs> as a computer and then it started working. But yeah, <laughs> things like that can happen. Uh, Tesla car is also great for long trips. Like we did uh, two big uh, trips in Europe and we plan more. And you can even save uh, on accommodation uh, because we bought this uh, mattress which maximizes the space in the car and, uh, and uh, we can sleep in the car. What's great is the electric car or Tesla has uh, this camp mode which keeps the AC uh, on the whole night. You couldn't do this with a gasoline car because the engine would have to be on. Here, you just like depleting the battery, but you can have the same temperature the whole night, which is really great. But there is a downside, of course, that it's, 
it's draining battery and uh, about uh, 10 to 30 percent of battery per per night uh, if you are sleeping in the car uh, based on like outside temperature if it's like really freezing it's more like 30 percent if it's warm it's like 10 percent and uh, uh, like when we were on this first trip sleeping in the car uh, we didn't know this and like we we went to sleep when the battery was just 30 percent and there is actually a safety feature that the camp mode will turn off uh, if the battery goes uh, under 20 percent so at like 4 a.m at night we woke up <laughs> freezing because the camp mode turned off so it wasn't pleasant so you should always uh, charge the car before you go to sleep to at least like 50 percent And uh, my final point uh, is uh, that uh, Tesla here, even here in Czech Republic, has great community of owners. So we have like Facebook groups where we uh, talk about all the things, all the new software updates. It's a really supportive community. This is the, the best event. I think uh, it was in Pelhrimov. Uh, we, we try to put uh, as many Teslas uh, on, a, on a square and create uh, like a, a Czech record. It was a really great event, but uh, when we were uh, like driving to the event, uh, I managed to puncture my tire and also make a dent uh, in, in a car body here, uh, which, which uh, really was really bad and I thought I couldn't uh, attend this um, meeting of uh, car owners. But uh, I posted my situation on this Facebook group and one of the owners said, hey, I'm coming to this uh, to this event so I can bring you uh, my uh, winter tires. So he, he brought the winter tires, we changed winter tires and I could uh, attend the meeting, which is really great. So as a summary, a uh, uh, year with Tesla was full of up and downs but it was really a great adventure. I don't regret it. And uh, I enjoy uh, driving and living with this car every day. Uh, if you are interested in more uh, details, uh, I'm uh, writing blog posts about my experience with the car on a website called uh, elonx.cz. So thank you for attention. Pozor, mute. Sorry, I muted myself before I started talking, which sometimes happened. <laughs> what I was uh, talking about is that it sounds like the slice uh, car fun to drive when it's not updating. So thank you so much for real life insights. Uh, it was great to see. And the time is rushing. Uh, so let's see who is the Next up, who is the next speaker? And by the way, you can catch uh, uh, David Vavra in networking zone. He will for sure join uh, after party in the world. The next up is David or David again. Uh, this time it's David Rishanek, one of uh, organizers of MDEF camp and also one of co-founders of uh, Confirmatic. And David prepared the talk. I'm not, I'm not at all sure what is he going to talk about, but I'm very curious. The name of his talk, which he gave me is introvert unchained so uh, david are you ready to be unchained on stage <laughs> i already am unchained okay let's do it uh, david the stage is yours <laughs> <laughs> thank you thank you for the intro so uh i was born as a standard default introvert interested in computers and not interested in talking to people uh but there is a lot of danger in the world outside, which you will, which will try to take you and transform you into extrovert. So be aware, introverts. Stay introvert, stay cool. I met some of these dangers and I would like to share them with you so you can avoid them and stay introvert. So rule number one. Let me switch to my presentation. Okay. Don't be musician. To be a musician involves 
to standing in front of people and perform in front of people, which is thing which are we introverts are scared of, right? So in high school, I was very interested in hip hop music. So and I during that time I start to compose music and writing lyrics, and I even did a rap by myself. If you don't know what rap is, I will demonstrate you something like this. Žáky, žáky, město snů, a my tu žijeme už spousta dnů. Beton je tady, a beton je i tam. Všechno je na beton, každý fandí nám, jo, žák. Já, to je baby. Já, the problem was that I was not able to remember a lot of words, which is included in the lyrics. And I was afraid to talk to people in front of them. So, to be a rapper, famous rapper was no go. So I switched to playing bass, bass guitar. Why bass guitar? Because bass players are usually invisible in the band. Do you see any bass player? Hardly, I'm saying. Uh, that's me staying in the background, in the back, happy with the drummer. But during the time, I started to enjoy to be on stage in front of people. Happily, I didn't have to talk, so I just played the bass and enjoyed the music and the members of the band. Uh, so I started to feel comfortable on the stage and we started to make jokes and fun with my mates. But if you play long enough or good enough, your audience is getting bigger and bigger and bigger. Yeah, we were even so uh, cheeky. Uh, the band was playing Irish traditional music, but in the Czech style, so it is more comfortable to listen to it. So we were so cheeky, so we flew into the Ireland to their biggest festival and we played their Irish music for the Irish people. Irish people play the Irish music at the moment, or since the moment they are bored. So their most common reaction was, oh, okay, it's nice, good, yeah, but, you know, we play differently. Yeah. We also have confidence to play the Irish music in Dublin streets. Yeah. And all of this, staying in front of people and perform something, it will drag you out of your comfort zone, out of your introvert zone and you slowly start to become extrovert right uh, after some time we decided to we should that we should wear kilts kilt is a traditional uh, basically it's skirt for men yeah. and every time uh, you perform gig in uh, kilts, there is someone who asks, hey, what do you wear underneath it? Because the rule is you should wear nothing. Uh, so there are always always these questions. Uh, and I would like to show you now and clarify this issue once and for all. So three, two, one. OK, <clears throat> so I hope that this is Clean for once and for all. Rule number two, don't join crazy band. If you need to join a band, join a regular boring band. Uh, but once I joined a funky band with 11 members and we decided from the start that we would like to perform a show, not only concert with music, but to show and to entertain people. So we decided to wear costumes. I say, OK, I will wear a costume, but only if I wear a mask, so no one will recognize me. So the solution was Spider-Man. Yeah. But I start to enjoy it. I even more, I stop to fear spiders for some reason. Like I said, we had different costumes at every gig. Uh, the shows 
were bigger. We even had the uh, exotic dancers on stage. And uh, later came the moment that we uh, were cost as a costume our ladies' uh, clothes. Uh, that was a very opening mo moment for me. Uh, and I somehow enjoy that moment that I it's a show, it's a fun, it's informal, so I don't give a damn about what, what it is. And I enjoy it. Uh, and that push pull me really far from uh, my comfort zone. So you should avoid uh, avoid play in costumes. And we decided to make a music video and why not in the center of Prague on Wenceslav Square chasing some guy in the old Mercedes with guns in the daylight. Yeah. The fun fact is that the only institution caring about us was the security of uh, some nightclub. No police showed up. Next rule, don't shoot movies. Don't join movie industry. Uh, during my high school times, I earned some money as a extras, which means a uh, comparse. It's me in the corner. Uh, but uh, I needed more money, so I take a job uh, as a stand-in, which is non-acting double for main uh, movie actors. And once you join it, uh, you meet a lot of interesting people, a uh, lot of uh, models, a lot of famous people and celebrities. And you have to, it's mandatory to join a lot of parties. So there is no space for introverts if you want to do that job. Next rule, don't develop yourself. Don't improve yourself. Some time ago, uh, I attended a uh, couple of courses from Prasnina Lipnice, which is for your self-development. Uh, and that involves a lot of role-playing, like something like in theater. Yeah. A lot of high society moments, having a bath in the blood, and uh, having bath in the night in the middle of nowhere in abandoned railway station and explaining to the police, what the fuck are we doing there? Uh, one of the favorite activities in Prazninovka is, uh, it is called Way to the People. And in, it involves uh, you to travel for a couple of days without any food, water or money or phone, just relying on the kindness of people you meet. So you have to ask them for water and food and oversleep as well. So you can imagine that it is really difficult. And this was another big step out of my comfort zone. Next rule, don't learn to speak publicly. Uh, some time ago, I joined Inmind, father of uh, MDF camp. And one day they asked me, hey, David, uh, we need some uh, hosts, hosts of the talks. Would you like to help us? Sure, I will help you. But that involved to talk to the microphone, to the audience on the stage, which is the most scariest moment for every introvert. But somehow I did it. Uh, even more, I uh, took lessons how to present. And uh, once someone know that you can present, you can talk to people, there is no way back. And uh, you end like this, like given you give up, uh, talks yours by yourself. Next rule. And this is the last one, the most boring, most short, but very important. Don't start your own startup. Because 
having your own company or startup means that meeting a lot of people is inevitable. So avoid it. Uh, these are the six most important rules and dangers to avoid if you would like to stay in your comfort introvert zone. So thank you for uh, watching, stay introvert and enjoy your life. Thank you so much, David. We will have to be more careful. Thank you for all the tips. <laughs> and I'll definitely not start playing bass. That, that looks scary. Okay. Uh, thank you so much for the second lightning talk. And uh, let's go to uh, the day's finale uh, regarding the, uh, on the on the side of the talks, uh, the networking can continue for a couple more hours. And I just a few minutes ago decided to add one more lightning talk uh, for uh, another seven minutes, probably. And I would like to uh, tell you uh, our story of Confirmatic, uh, the story of overnight a lockdown success, which happened after 11 years. But it all started many years ago. I will share you one seventh of the of the story because I'm one of seven founders of the Confirmatic startup. Um, and I will give you my, my point of view of how Confirmatic as a startup uh, incepted and started a uh, long time ago, actually. Uh, because at that time, uh, we got an idea. And the idea was, it was a great idea. Let's let's build a huge conference where mobile developers around the world will be meeting, you know, and it will be exciting and full of people. Let, let's do it. So so we started in 2010. It seemed like a great idea. We see we saw a few steps in front of us, so we started stepping. Uh, so soon we realized that there is a little bit more steps than we expected uh, before we started. But we started anyway. Uh, first year in 2010, we actually didn't start with a conference called MDEF Camp or MDEF Meet, which you know today. Uh, the conference was called Andre Dev Camp with a cool, cool logo at the time. And we started big. Well, not so big on this picture, maybe. But actually, uh, this was from the break. There were a little bit more people, even in the first year. There was almost 100 attendees. Uh, even in the first, even uh, 10 years, 11 years ago now. Uh, little by little, we grew the event. Uh, next year, we were uh, at university. Uh, year after that, we renamed the conference to Mobile Dev Camp to be open to not only Android developers, of course, but for all mobile developers. A uh, few years later, we actually filled the whole cinema uh, with many, many rooms in the cinema. And we actually filled it. And it, it started to be too small for us. Uh, so we were growing little by little, and uh, a few more years later, uh, it actually became uh, the MDEF camp, as most of you know it uh, today. The conference where people from all around the globe are coming. On 2010, 20, 2019 conference, we had speakers from Japan, South Africa, Europe, US, all around the world. And we actually filled the, the big hall in Congress Center in, in Prague. And there, is, there was a full hall, and we actually became the place where mobile developers meet every year. Throughout the years, we've been always on the edge of, of the new things. You know, For example, in 2018, we noticed it's the year of the top notch. It was introduced by, by iPhone, and all the phones and all the platforms started to having the, the top notch with hidden cameras and everything. So we, of course, created the, the top notch conference for 2018. And we even updated our, our, our logo at that year. We added there the top notch, as you can see on the picture there. A year later, in 2019, the trend was obvious. Everyone was building uh, foldable phones, folding in different uh, directions. And so, of course, the end of camp holded the trend. And we became the mobile development unfolded conference. For that year, we even invented a special foldable t-shirt, t-shirt that you can actually fold to smaller size. And at, the, at that year, uh, we bring, brought uh, another innovation. There was a little game where you could play with your virtual little conference and, and their speakers and attendees. And there was a funny uh, running joke uh, in that year that maybe next time we should do uh, the conference in 3D virtual world uh, 
as a, as a whole event, not just a game in the phone. Uh, it, it sounds like, like a great joke, too, too crazy idea to even think about that. And then COVID hit unexpectedly. Uh, in the middle of preparations of 2020 conference, uh, suddenly it wasn't possible to do the real live conference. And the joke stopped uh, being a joke that much. We started about thinking about uh, actually doing it somehow differently than in real life, because we didn't want to skip a year of MDEF camp conference. But we are sure we don't want to do a conference uh, which is uh, just another YouTube stream when everyone is sitting at home and just watching the stream. We knew that one of the genes of MDEF camp was uh, that it's the place where people meet, actually. It's uh, where the community gathers together year after year. And we didn't want to lose that. And it's about being together for us and for everyone else who is joining the conference. We thought uh, there must be a solution for that. There must be some way how to do conference like that. So we started started searching around and testing different uh, different options. And we noticed that there is no such thing good for us, good for us developers, which would work on Mac, which would work uh, easily on all kinds of computers and would be fun enough for us to, to play with. Luckily, uh, the team behind MDEF Camp are not just organizers. It's a team of uh, people who are mixed from developers, uh, designers, uh, and sales, sales people, DevOps people. We have production guru in the team and, and, and myself uh, as well. So we decided to get our hands dirty and actually start building something. Thanks to David, who, who was actually talking just before me is, uh, about, about his uh, point of view on the startup building. Soon, uh, David and... Uh, couple other guys in the team built the first, very first version of the, of the game, which uh, how we were calling it at that time. And it was almost finished, it looked like it. And I was like, okay, we have it, we can start the conference. Uh, but it wasn't enough for, for people in our team. They worked hard, uh, they spent nights and days. Uh, it was actually just a couple of weeks before the conference, but they were uh, convinced that it's possible to make it there. And they actually made it. Uh, they actually built the whole 3D world and prepared it to be ready in like four or five weeks uh, to be able to start the conference. Uh, and a few weeks later, it, it actually happened. We had uh, MDEF Camp 2020 happening in 3D virtual world with everyone there, with possibility to see each other and talk to each other, with people meeting. And when we started gathering feedback after the event, we've been even more excited. Uh, we've been actually blown away by positivity of the feedback because it was something new and it was exciting for us and for attendees as well. And I hope you are enjoying the day in the conference or in the virtual world as well. It was it was uh, really cool and we've been uh, so excited. And we've rea realized there is actually one more thing. We finally made the conference, which is sustainable. We've been always dreaming about it and trying finding to find ways how to diminish the, the waste we are producing at the events. And we finally made it completely sustainably. So. Uh, that's how the Conformatic was incepted, how it became. So what is it? It's actually interactive 3D virtual space for large online events. It allows organizers to have massive audience. It allows attendees to freely move around the world. It's easy to network and you can have some fun there and you can watch live talk presentations. Uh, there are usually partner booths and many, many other features. Uh, we started even an uh, actual company around the virtual world, we start, which started at MDF Camp last year, so one year ago. The company started in November 2020, and since then, we hosted many, many events, like the biggest music festival in Czech Republic. There was a Christmas party for Avas there. Uh, there was a game developer session conference. There was an event, internal event for Škoda and, and, their, and students uh, visiting Škoda. There was a university career there, multiple of them around the Czech Republic and around the Europe. And there are many, many other events, being it internal events inside the companies where people, where for people it's difficult to meet, and it was difficult to meet in COVID times, and it would, will not be so easy even in, in, the, in the near future, right? It doesn't make sense to fly everyone into one place where you can meet uh, at the same, same time virtually and just see each other just like in the real, real life. We already were awarded uh, by, by some uh, awards, international, this, this one is European Excellence Awards in 2020 for event for Microsoft. And it's growing nicely. We had 
thousands of people in the in the world. We are now a team of 19 people in the startup in Conformatic. We are more than five months into the company. Uh, there is 42, which is important number for us as well. We had uh, more than 20 events already in the world, uh, many more than uh, 20. We had uh, even with more than 1,000 visitors at one time in one place. And our turnover is going to be in hundreds of thousands of euros after the first half of this year. The question is, what's next? Well, we don't know. We are working hard on, on, the, confer on, on the Conformatic platform. Uh, we are now focusing on, on the big companies, international companies, where people can start meeting together finally every couple of months and have a company uh, all hands meeting, for example, there or internal conference. But in further future, we'll see maybe virtual world, maybe we'll do uh, another of multiverses where you can just go and see people. Maybe we are going to implement NFTs and upgrades of your avatars. Maybe we are going to build um, mobile versions, which would be great since we were accepted in Embed Camp. We'll see. The future is coming. And uh, this was the inception of uh, Conformatic and how it became. And it was also uh, the last very, sh very short, uh, hopefully, lightning talk of the day and the last talk of the day uh, as such. Uh, this was this year MDEF meet, but I have few more important things on the agenda outside the lightning talk. Let's get back to MDEF meet. Uh, I will switch uh, the role from speaker to moderator and I will start giving thanks. And before that, uh, there are some uh, awards uh, to, be, to be given and some uh, some people to be picked, the winners of the games we had during the day. As you remember, uh, we had two games uh, during the day. The first one uh, you could find at uh, MSD stand, MSD puzzle game. And my uh, my task now, which, which I was given, is to take five winners of ticket for MDEF Camp 2022. So uh, when you finish the game, you were awarded by the special avatar that you could use. And now let's let me actually screen the share to make the uh, uh, the picking of winners uh, live. I will stop this screen share and I will open another window which we have prepared, where the script will pick the winners. So we are going to uh, look at five winners of the ticket for MDEF Camp 2022 for free. Uh, let's see. I hope you can see the, the sophisticated sheet we have there. And I'm going to generate the five winners. So the uh, first one is uh, the lucky person having the code CMAI1 on, on the this ticket. That's the first one. Next winner of ticket for end of camp 2022 is person with this code. I'm also saving the codes and we'll be contacting you by email. Uh, we'll connect the codes with the emails and contact you. So don't worry if you are not here. Uh, next one, the third out of five winners is person with this code on his ticket. And I will go there, the person number four out of five. And the last winner, of ticket for MDF Camp 2022 is the, the one having the code MTNT-1. So big congrats uh, to the winners of, of the tickets. But that's not it. Uh, there was one more challenge during the day. And we had five people finishing the challenge and we are going to, uh, to find who are the three lucky winners of the voucher for actual plane ticket, uh, the plane ticket you can actually exchange uh, for the plane and have a trip uh, wherever you want. Okay, let's see who are the winners of Kiwi Challenge. So the first winner is someone, uh, sorry, I'll click one more time. I hope the script is going to work. <laughs> this is what usually happens. Maybe someone broke the script. So maybe I have to get back to it, or I have to fix it live. Maybe Erika is listening to me, and he's already fixing it and already starting the generation for Thanks. me. Uh, so the winner number one is, we'll see if the button comes alive. And it works now. Perfect. 
So it's Paris number with uh, the ticket number LZ3J-1. Thank you so much and congratulations. We have two more winners to go. So the next one is person with this ticket code. I'm saving it down. And the last winner of voucher for plane ticket is person with this code. As I said, we will be contacting you through email and uh, we will just uh, uh, talk about the, the details of handing you uh, the, the, the vouchers or the tickets for MDEF Camp 2022. Uh, let me switch to my slides uh, one more time for the last time today. Uh, this is the right window. Okay, you will see my slide very soon because uh, there are three last things I would like to share with you today. Uh, one is that we are, of course, recording all the talks. It wasn't possible to be on the both stages at the same time. So we've been, of course, recording it. And you will get the recordings to your email as soon as it's ready. It will take us a couple of weeks probably, uh, but as soon as the recordings are ready, you will get it in your email with all the information you could possibly need. Another thing you will get to your email very soon is our feedback form. And please, please give us uh, five minutes of your time and fill out the feedback form. We really want, want to know what did you think about the virtual world? What did you think about the MDEF meet as, as an idea, uh, which was completely new idea. It's, it was something very different to conference we are doing usually. So please, please let us know. Um, one more thing, if you will be sharing some screenshot or anything you went through today, please share it with one of those hashtags there on the screen, MDEF meet or MDEF camp. We are monitoring those and that's also great feedback for us uh, to, to learn from what you went through during the day or what are you going to go through uh, until, until the evening today? Um, there is, of course, uh, one big thank I, I need to give because it wouldn't be uh, possible at all uh, to do even like this or the 10 years of MF, MF can before without the support of our partners. Uh, partners were uh, on one hand side, our startup Confirmatic, the 3D world, uh, but there were also other great companies helping us throughout the years and this year as well. And thank you so much to be brave enough and join the virtual event in these tough times for event organizers. The partners are JetBrains. Thank you so much, JetBrains, to be with us. Uh, Smartlook, uh, thank you so much. Uh, there is Kivi.com as the partner. Thank you, Kivi.com. And MSD, our last partner this year. Uh, thank you. Thank you so much for being with us uh, this year for supporting our, our MDEF camp and MDEF meet. And thank you so much to you, our attendees who are here with us today and who were here today. We had more than 200 people this year in this difficult year. And thank you so much to join us, to be on the talks, to, to be in the speaker corners. We've seen a lot of discussions happening there. And we are looking forward to see you live. We, we hope, we don't know for sure, of course, what is going to happen in next years. But we hope, we really hope that we will be able to celebrate uh, 10 years of MDEF camp, the, the official 10 MDEF camp. We hope to be happening next year in spring 2022 in Prague. So fingers crossed for that. We hope it's going to happen. If not, we'll definitely find something to do. Uh, there will be no gap, but we hope to see you live next year in Prague in 2022. But the day is not over. Uh, there is maybe in, in some parts of the world, it, it may be night or it may be raining, but in the virtual world, there is a nice tropical island and there will be always nice weather. So please, if you are still here, uh, you can come to the networking island. It's in the top, uh, top right corner. If you look at the map, there are topics you can discuss or you can just visit the bar and there are the chat zones. So please come there and just discuss with us. We are definitely, we as organizers are definitely going to there. Uh, to, to, to networking island and, and see you there. And let's have a little after party. If you have uh, something to drink, just bring it with, with, with yourself. This time it's unfortunately uh, um, impossible to ship the, uh, the catering to you. We have to care, take care of it yourself, but we'll be very, very happy to see you there and just discuss what, what have you seen and what do you like today? Uh, and, and that's it. Uh, that's it from the slides. Uh, the presentations are over for this year and Let's go to the networking party if you are still still there in the virtual world. If you are not, please, please join us there. Okay, see you there. I'm going to switch to my avatar now. <laughs>